Hello, welcome to this tutorial for protein protein docking with Rosetta. Uh, I'm Christina Lisa Martina, postdoc in Mailer Lab. You should already have seen me for the scoring function tutorial. And today we will discuss about protein protein interaction. So, protein protein interaction uh, are really important in every aspect that we can consider, like uh, the cellular metabolism. We have protein protein interaction in the intercellular or intracellular communication for morphology and motility, cell growth and proliferation, gene expression, and so on. Also in infection and disease, we have protein-protein interaction. For example, viruses need to contact protein on the cell surface uh, to attach and also to enter the cell. So this is again a protein-protein interaction. And also in something that is not really a pathogen, but is more uh, a disease like neurodegenerative disease, uh, we have protein that adopt misfolded conformation and that can have protein-protein interaction um, forming filaments that then will destroy and uh, kill the cell. So this is all due again to protein-protein interaction. At last, also in the lab, uh, if you are an experimental person, for example, you may already have used nanobodies or protein probes or antibodies in order to isolate or recognize a protein in your sample. And all these are also based on protein-protein interaction, so this is really important. And luckily for us, uh, Rosetta developed a protocol or multiple protocol for understanding uh, and mimic the protein-protein interaction that you can have, and it's called protein-protein docking, where basically we have a protein A, that in this case is in yellow and antibody, and a protein B, uh, Rosetta can basically form the complex between A and B and identify the binding site that here I highlight in red. Uh, and Rosetta can do starting from unbound structure. So this is a really powerful technique. Uh, we have two main kind of docking. There are multiple ones, but these are really the main two that you want to consider, the global docking or the local docking. The difference between the two is basically just based on the knowledge you have about the system that you want to try to dock. So if you have no information on where the binding site is, you may prefer the global docking. You can prefer the global docking also if you are not even sure that the two proteins are really interacting between themselves. And you can just say, let's try. So what happens during global docking? Uh, we have at the beginning random uh, positioning between the um, blue protein and the yellow protein. And for example, in one case, we have up here, in another down here, in another down here, and in another, we have it close to the actual binding site. Um, so we will test all the different combination of position between the two partners. This is really advantageous if you have no information. You can anyway try to dock two protein. However, uh, there are many limitations, so only two partners are, are accepted. Uh, it means you just need one chain a and one chain B. You cannot have uh, trimers, for example. It's less accurate than the local docking and requires much more computational time. And right now, it works best only for small complexes of less than 450 amino acids. However, if you have more or less a vague idea of where the binding site is, you don't need to have a crystal structure. It's just enough to say more or less here. Uh, you can use the local docking. So in the local docking, let's say you know that more or less the binding site is here, you can start prepositioning your structure more or less around. So in this case, you will have it here. This is slightly different. This is more in the down part and so on. So you will not sample all the surrounding. You will just focus your sampling for the area where you think is the binding site. Uh, this is much more accurate than the global docking and requires less computational um, time. Uh, you can accept that it can accept multiple partners. So in this case, and in the, in the tutorial, we will have four chains. Two belong to the antibody in yellow, light chain and heavy chain, and two are the epitope. Uh, this will not be possible with the global docking. And you can also, as advantage, integrate experimental data that you can have um, from your experimental lab. The only limitation is that you need to know more or less where is the binding site. So let's give a look to the protocol. This is the protocol for the local docking. 
you start with the input preparation, then you have a first stage in low resolution. If you saw my um, short talk about scoring function, I already described what is a low resolution and a high resolution. I will go quickly also in this uh, tutorial. Uh, anyway, we will have a first stage at low resolution that will be followed by the stage at high resolution and then we will analyze the output. So this is the protocol for the local docking, but this can really be easily adapted for other applications because Rosetta is very flexible. So if you want to do global docking, the protocol is the same with the addition of the stage zero where we randomize the initial position of the two partners. If you want something that's just go on low resolution, you can decide to only use stage one and not go in higher resolution. While on the other case, let's say you have a, a co-crystal structure that is not high resolution and you need just to refine it, you can only do the high resolution step. So Rosetta is very flexible and you can play based on what you know and what you have um, in your system. So let's see the input preparation. For me, it's one of the more uh, long part because you need to make sure that all the inputs are well prepared. Once they are done, you just do a click and stage one and stage two, two will be done automatically, so you will not have so much to do. Anyway, for the input preparation, we will need the PDB structure, and in this case, you need the two or more partners to be in the same PDB. They have to have different chain names and they have to be within 10 Armstrong distance at the binding. Uh, side, more or less where you think that that is. Uh, the starting structure must be prepacked because you want to lower the energy of the side chain uh, of the docking interface for the later calculation. And you can also require extra step, we will see it during the tutorial, because you will need, for example, to reduce the size of one protein to reduce the calculation time. You may have chain breaks that you have to close, or you will have to model some loops or you want to prepare a sample of conformers to increase the accuracy. So there are many things you will need to do before doing the actual docking, uh, especially for the PDB preparation. Other things you need as input is the XML file. I guess you already saw the XML file in other protocol or in other tutorials, and also in uh, the short talk relative to the XML file. I have a few slides about it, uh, just to refresh it to you. And other files you may need uh, can be included to not really give a protocol of what has to be done, but just to tune the Rosetta docking run. Uh, this can include option file or constraint if you have from experimental data, for example. Uh, the next stage is the low resolution stage that is also referred as centering mode or coarse grain, coarse grain. Uh, in this case, each residue in the um, complex or in, the, in each protein is represented as a centroid in which the backbone is defined as each single atom while the side chain is represented by a sphere that represents more or less the size and the properties of the amino acid, for example, the charge. So in this stage, Rosetta uh, attempts to kind of find the rough orientation of the docking partner and it basically is based on the, the recognition of the true surface. So if we have a um, complementarity between the shapes of the protein, we will have higher, like better results. So the advantage of the low resolution is that the calculation will be faster. The limitation is that the accuracy will be lower. So this is why we will we'll need that to pass to a high resolution um, step that is also called all atom or full atom. In this case, the centroids are replaced with side chains uh, that we add in the unbound conformation. And then we test different uh, conformation for the side chain that are called rotamers. And they are tested and if accepted, the complex is then minimized and repacked. So this is much more accurate than the centroid mode, but it's uh, taking much more calculation time. So you need to find a good balance between the two. Here there is a more detailed description of what Rosetta is doing. Basically we want to mimic, mimic nature where two protein, like casual encounter, uh, they form a sort of complex, pre-complex, uh, that then is refined thanks to the 
optimization of the site tuning information, for example. So we have a starting structure, and in the low resolution stage, we will have an initial perturbation in a rotation. Sorry, this is in translation. So you move the protein, one of the uh, partner uh, relative to the other, and we, in our default condition, we allow three Armstrong. You can also rotate uh, about eight degree. And then you have the rigid body move and the Monte Carlo uh, sampling can accept or refuse it. And this is repeated for 500 times. So for the one that are accepted at this stage, we go in the high resolution stage where we have first to change the centroid to um, full atom. Then we have to try the rotamer. And if the delta score is uh, lower than 15, in that case, we can do minimization, and Monte Carlo can accept or, or um, discard. And we will have 50 cycles, and every eight cycle, we will have a full repack. So when all this is finished, we will have our single output. So you have to consider that this is quite a complicated uh, process, and is one of the longest uh, applications in Rosetta. So in your tutorial, for preparing one single model, you will take more or less 30 minutes. And this is because we have many things to try. We have 500 uh, cycles here, 50 cycles here. It's um, a very complex protocol. So about numbers, you should, for your application, you should require at least 500 output structure uh, for your protein, protein docking. 1000 is recommended, but as I mentioned you before, in our tutorial, producing one will take 30 minutes, so producing 10,000 will be really out of the time. And for this reason, we will just produce 10 output in order to show you how does it work. But if you will really doing it in real life, uh, you should at least go up to 500, and you should have a good cluster to do things in parallel. Uh, another point I want to make is not all the requested outputs will necessarily be reproduced. So if the Monte Carlo doesn't accept the structure, this will not be produced and Rosetta will start with the new one. So it can happen and probably will happen during the tutorial that you will not produce all the 10 requested and you will have maybe just 8. This is normal, don't worry about it. So finally, you did the docking, you produce all the models that you need you need to analyze the output. And for doing that, we have a mover inside Rosetta that is called Interface Analyzer that is designed to analyze interfaces. So we can calculate different things like the binding energy between two partners, the residues that are involved in the interaction, and the MSD between uh, the model that you create and the native structure if you have one. So uh, you use the interface analyzer after everything is finished and you will need again a list of uh, input that will be the output PDB from the docking. You need an XML file defining the protocol for interface analyzer. You will need the native structure for the calculation of the MSD and you may need other file like the option file. So from the interface analyzer we will then extract and plot the MSD versus total energy that give us that, an idea about the stability of the complex, and we will calculate also the MSD versus binding energy that give us an idea of the energy of the interaction only. So for both we expect a funnel-like plot, similar to this, in which we have many structures at higher uh, MSD and higher energy, and few that go down towards the native complex. Sometimes we reach it, sometimes we depass it, sometimes we are not so close to it. And this means that maybe in this situation, we just have to increase the number of models. I guess here will be probably 200 or 300. And if we increase it to 1000, we can probably reach the native complex energy. So now let's talk about the XML file. I guess you already saw it in the short talk or in previous um, talk, but just a short description of it. As you can see, it can be really complicated. but in blue you have the protocol name uh, and you cannot change like if you try to change or you misspell it it will not work the same is valid for the team that is the name option 
And this you cannot really change, but what you can modify is the, the yellow between the brackets part, that is the value that uh, you give. So for example, in this case, we have a prevent residues from repacking, and let's say we know experimentally that these residues should stay in exactly that conformation, you don't want them to change, so you can uh, define here which residue you, you don't want to change. Uh, in white, finally, we have comments, so these are not uh, read by Rosetta, this is just for the user to make it more friendly, so in this case it's telling me that this uh, mover is the minimization one, while these three are the docking movers. So as you already should know, Rosetta will read first the protocol, that is exactly the order in which we want the things to happen, and the protocol will call the movers, and then the mover will call the task operation. So if we see the protocol, uh, Rosetta will read, that, read it in the order, so the first things we'll do is the low docking, low resolution docking. Then it will cyber read the sidechains in order to pass from centroid mode to uh, high resolution mode, and then we will do the high resolution docking. Once the docking protocol is finished, Rosetta will then do the minimization of the interface only. So if you want more information, like you want to tune what is the docking low resolution or high resolution zone, you go to check the movers, that is the central section. And here, we, as I just said before, we have the first one that is relative to the minimization, that is the last step in the protocol. So as you can see, the order here of what you call is not really important. Um, and here are the movers for the docking. So, if you need more information about the mover, you can go online uh, on Rosetta Commons Mover Rosetta script, and there is a list of all the movers that are now integrated in Rosetta, and you can find many dedicated to the docking or many dedicated to other application. Uh, the next things we have to mention is the task operation that is called here um, from the mover. This is the first section that was described in an XML file. So these are useful to define things for certain portion of the protein. For example, like we saw before the prevent residues from repacking, we don't want these uh, to repack, so we can define them and say don't do repacking on those residues. And the same is for the other, like you can restrict to repacking or, uh, or so on. And again, for the task operation, you can go online on Rosetta Commons, task operation and Rosetta scripts. So, the next thing we have to understand is the option file. And this is really important because it contains many important uh, information, like the binding partner that is defined here, docking partners AB underscore HL. This means, this underscore means that the interface is here between AB and HL. So, all the energy that will be calculated will be on this interface. If you change it and you put, for example, A underscore BHL, the energy will be calculated basically for the complex AB. Uh, so this is really important for defining where the interface should fail. Oops, I'm sorry. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, the second parameter here is the perturbation of the docking. So I told you at the beginning uh, that we will translate or rotate the protein, so translation of 3 Armstrong and rotation of 8 the degree. Um, you can tune this if you want to be more restrictive, you can just decrease the number, so allow the rotation of 2, uh, sorry, allow the translation of 2 Armstrong and the rotation of 5. You can also be less restrictive and increase this number in order to um, try more option. So this is really useful to tune your docking do protein protein docking run. We have other important things like the input structure, that is this one, the output structure, the weights that we want to use, and so on. So again, for all the options, you can go on Rosetta Commons and there is a full option list. Uh, now, the tutorial that we are going, we are going to do today. We have an antibody that's here represented in yellow, that is called CR6261, and is known to bind multiple subtypes of influenza antigen hemagglutinin HA. 
So for example, 3GBM in blue uh, is the epitope uh, for influenza virus H5N1, while 3GBN is for H1N1. And um, this one is basically the, the virus strain that happened in 1918 after the First World War and that killed millions of people. So this is basically the last pandemic. Uh, what we want to do, we know that the antibody binds both, but you can see in the structure, in the co-crystal structure of each one, that we have a slightly different conformation. So here we have a partial helix that is formed, while here this is not. So what we want to do is take the structure from one complex, inserting in the in the other complex, and see if we can retrieve the original conformation um, of this. This is a cross-docking experiment, so we already know that the protein is interacting, and we want to double check that Rosetta is doing a good job in this. Uh, is not one of the more fancy docking protein-protein docking uh, experiment. But this will give you a good idea of what, how Rosetta works and um, how good you can retrieve uh, known complexes. So what you will have to do is to prepare the input. So we will download the PDB, clean it, close a chain break. We will need them to repack the structure because we close a chain break. And then we will have to orient them in order to start the docking. During the docking, we will both do the docking on um, the cross um, structure and we will also minimize the native structure for a, a comparison at the end. Then we will do the analysis of the output, so we will perform the interface analyzer and then we will plot the RMSD uh, versus total energy and the RMSD versus binding energy. So for this tutorial it's everything. Uh, here there is a list of papers about protein protein docking that you ch can check out. Uh, if you have questions, please post them in Discord. We will be there to answer them. And see you in a bit for the walk-in during the tutorial. So, see you. Have fun.